Okay, so let me tell you about my boat. The boat is a 1963 Pearson Triton. It's 28 feet. It was commissioned to be built in 1962. It was delivered in 1963 to the original owner. So this video is about why I chose the Pearson Triton and the seven characteristics that make a Pearson Triton a great small ocean passage maker for solo sailing. So the first reason that I chose a Pearson Triton is the size of the boat, but also the simplicity of the boat. I wanted a boat that was under 30 feet that would be easy to handle as a solo sailor or single-handed sailing. The second characteristic is the strength and the durability. So the Pearson Triton at 60 years old, it was one of the first production boats made out of fiberglass. And when they started to use fiberglass, those early boats were built very heavy. Boats in general were built on the side of safety. So they used a lot of fiberglass, a lot of polyester or epoxy and the layup. They made them durable because they didn't really know how they would handle, how strong they would be. A common comment about these early boats is how thick the hull is or how strong the hull is. And it's true. When I knock on the side or when I inspect the hull for any signs of damage or wear, at 60 years old, the hull is in phenomenal condition. They are a durable boat. But the next characteristic is that I wanted a long keel with encapsulated ballast, not a bolted on keel. This was important. A long keel, generally speaking, tracks better and it's better for self-steering. A long keel boat will also heave to easier and is a lot less likely to broach in heavy seas. And another benefit of the long keel is that they produce the most sea kindly motion. And although that seems kind of funny, it's also important because when out sailing alone, seasickness will also be an interruption to my performance and cause more or greater fatigue on me. So having a boat that has better motion, is more stable, tracks better, means that I can perform better as a sailor as well. Of course, the argument is that a long keel tracks straighter but is less maneuverable, but that's fine because I don't intend on running any races in the boat. Uh, I can lower my speed and also this is a 28 foot boat, not a 50 foot boat, and so the arc of my turn will be smaller in comparison to a longer vessel. So although they may not turn as sharp as a fin keel, they will still at 28 feet be able to make a reasonable turn radius. The next characteristic is the rudder and I wanted a keel mounted rudder that's controlled with a tiller. And this again has to do with the simplicity of handling it. With a steering wheel, there's a little bit more that can go wrong and more complicated to fix. So a tiller is more simple, and for me, simple is better. The benefit of having a keel-mounted rudder is that the rudder is also protected. It's guarded by that long, strong keel, and so it's less likely to bang against something independently or be fouled up with uh, fishing lines. Generally speaking, a keel-mounted rudder is a better choice, again, for me and solo passage making. Another characteristic is the size, size on its own. And I've already touched on the size quite a bit, but the size for me was important because it is a boat that was made to sleep for. And I plan to sail this boat solo, possibly with one guest, maybe from time to time, I would add another guest or two. So we are looking at that size of one to four people. So although I can sail it well solo, I can add a few more people and we can be comfortable for a day or two. Solo, there's enough space in here for me to be comfortable for longer periods of time. 
The next characteristics have to do with the finances of the boat, what it will cost. And I mentioned the size and how size matters. I wanted a boat under 30 feet because a smaller boat is, generally speaking, always going to cost less to maintain than a larger boat. So maintenance costs, new sails are calculated the cost by square footage, you know, and this boat will have smaller sails than a 45 foot boat. Uh, the running lines, the rigging, everything will be smaller. So it's getting the most out of a smaller size and the smaller size will mean less cost in finances. Also the cost to buy the boat is less. There are Pearson Tritons on the market anywhere from free if you're willing to do a lot of work up to about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars and those higher price boats are boats that have been completely refit and generally speaking in fantastic near new for an older boat condition so I'm not going to tell you what I paid for this boat but I will say that I'm happy with the price that I paid uh, it's less than I was budgeting to pay for a boat and that means that I can either save some money or put some of my budget into fixing her up and making some you know modern type of improvements. So the last characteristic is the pedigree and some would argue that this is the most important characteristic. So the Pearson Triton was designed in 1958 by Carl Alberg. Carl Elberg is a renowned yacht designer and he built dozens of boat designs that are well-respected designs. The Pearson Triton was commissioned as a design by Pearson Yachts and launched their yacht company and in many ways also launched Carl Elberg's fame to being a respectable, knowledgeable yacht designer. And the pedigree goes further than that. When we talk about a boat that's capable of passage making, we want to have knowledge that someone else has gone before and tested it. And James Baldwin is a sailor who circumnavigated the globe twice in his Pearson Triton Atom. But knowing that this boat was designed by one of the most respected yacht designers for classic boats and that it has successfully made at least two circumnavigations and countless other Atlantic or Pacific crossings. I'm comfortable with the pedigree of this boat. So those are the seven characteristics why I think that the Pearson Triton is a great small ocean passage maker for solo sailing. Now, let's start refitting the boat.